Well, listen, uh, the second Sunday of each August, we have Superhero Sunday, and that is what today is. And we want to talk about some really amazing things that God is doing, but you say, where did this come from? Well, this Sunday is very, very meaningful to Jen and I. Like she just talked about, our third son, Paxton, was born on October 6, 2011, and you know what? We were a little surprised as we were in the uh, delivery room as the doctor looked at us and said, it looks like your son has traces of Down syndrome. Now, that is not what we expected. We did not have any idea that he had Down syndrome. We did not do any of the tests prior because uh, according to our faith, it wouldn't have changed anything anyway. We, uh, we were still happy to accept our third son into the world. And so at that moment, it kind of shocked us and we found ourselves having a new normal. And that was that we were now parents of a child with special needs. And, uh, you know, it didn't come, that, that whole situation didn't come with an instruction manual. Um, really, to be honest with you, we, we, uh, we, we were shocked and we had um, some dark moments, to be real honest with you, of where we were questioning, why did this happen? But you know what was so great is, is this little boy was born, this is a couple days after he was born, here he is, little Paxton. This is him with his little, like, hairdo going on there and, uh, and stuff. And he immediately became the joy of our lives. In fact, we, we often say this as the DeWerts and even the other boys. He is our favorite. Literally, the other boys are like, yeah, he's our favorite too, all right? Uh, he is our favorite. He has brought such life. And yet, at the same time, the journey in the last almost six years, this October will be six years, um, has been a little challenging. But here we are. This is a recent picture. We got our haircuts uh, kind of similar together here. Uh, so here's Paxton. You saw him up here a few minutes ago on stage. And he is an amazing, amazing kid. In fact, he is actually, technically and officially, he is the president of Champions Club. I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, when we opened it up, uh, he became the president. You say, what's Champions Club? Well, a, a church down in Houston, Texas, a great church by the name of Lakewood, had started a thing called Champions Club, and there was a mutual friend uh, who introduced us to a pastor down there by the name of Craig Johnson, and Craig, who's on staff there, has a child with autism, and uh, he discovered that it was very hard to be able to go to church and to put his son into a typical Sunday school environment because of uh, his son's special need. And so a mutual friend introduced us to Craig. We actually flew down there, Jen and Pax and I, and we looked and toured this amazing facility that there were these Sunday school classes that were specifically designed for children with special needs. We literally wept as we were walking through the hallways. And uh, I looked at Jen and I go, Rockford can do this. Rockford can do this. We need this. Not just because of, of, of Paxton, but more importantly, because now our eyes had been opened and our minds and our souls had been awakened to a brand new reality, and that is this. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of families who have children or relatives with special needs, and going to church is very hard. In fact, for us, you know, Paxson has Down syndrome, and, and, and that is obviously a, a special need and a disability, but there were many families we were introduced to that the challenges that they encountered were much more difficult than what even we were encountering. And so we came back to Rockford and we said, listen, church, City First Church can make a difference. We can do something that we can provide a way for families to come to church who otherwise it is almost literally impossible for them to come to church. And so this church gave over $100,000 and one year, you listen to this, you can give applause in a moment here, one year literally to the weekend after Paxton was born because of the generosity of this church and the vision of this church for those people those champions that are a part of our community, we opened up Champions Club. You can give God a huge round of applause for that. Yeah. Amazing. Listen to this story of a family who's been profoundly impacted because of your generosity, church. When we got pregnant with our first baby, we planned like any other couple would plan, where you, you ha basically have a mental idea of how things are going to work and how things are going to play out. Flash forward to, to 18 months old, 
and Ethan was diagnosed to be developmentally delayed along with PDD and secondary autism. It means that he's highly sensitive to stimulant environments. The lifestyle that we had at that time didn't adapt well to a child that had those needs. It was a season of life that we never saw coming. And when you have a special needs child, it's easy in the world to feel like a burden, to feel like your child may be too much for someone to handle or people may not know how to handle them. So we found ourselves really seeking out and searching for a place that we could just go and worship. We had heard about Champions Club at City First Church, and we had heard about Superhero Weekend, and we were wondering, is this really the best time to come on our first weekend? So we talked to some friends that had attended City First, and they said, absolutely, this is the perfect weekend for you to come. As soon as we walked in, we, we felt celebrated and that he was truly he was welcomed here in a way we've never experienced before. I think City First has done a fabulous job on removing the fears that a parent with special needs would normally have. Our families have their own parking where we have our own entrance to come into, so they don't need to walk through the big parking lot and the big entrance, and they come straight in and they're greeted by, by amazing volunteers and their, their coach. Every child gets a buddy their coach. Ethan every week is like, where my coach at? <laughs> and he, he, he knows that they're there for him. And these rooms are not like a typical, you know, church room or a worship atmosphere, but these rooms are adapted to these, these kids. Instead of adapting the kids to the rooms, the rooms and the atmosphere at Champions Club are adapted to these kids. So they come in and they have a strategic plan. They know exactly what's gonna happen. Being able to come to church and fully release and fully be vulnerable and not worry about if he is okay or if, or what's going on because I know these people here, they, they normally handle them better than I do. There are so many families that I know that don't attend worship or don't get the healing word of God ever because they don't want to be a burden to, to you know, a church or they don't want to be stressed out while they're in service. Um, and I can honestly tell you that my husband and I would not be where we are today without this church and without Champions Club. So it's Superhero Sunday, and immediately after this, we are going to have a huge party outside. In fact, at 12.30, there are some superheroes that are going to be uh, skydiving and parachuting onto our location. So you want to make sure that you're out there by 12.30. Some of you are saying, well, Jeremy, where is your outfit? We're supposed to wear superhero outfits. I am. I have one here. It says, not every hero wears a cape. And we will have these shirts out there made available also. So it is uh, a special Sunday. But you know what I have decided? discovered, I've discovered this, that everyone needs superhero strength to encounter the stuff in this life. Everyone is battling something. Can I get a big amen? Yeah. Everyone is battling something, and we need a superhero, supernatural kind of strength to be able to encounter the difficulties of life. Yet some of us don't feel like we have the strength or we don't have the power. It's kind of like when you forget to charge your phone when you go to bed at night, and when you wake up the next morning, it only has 18% battery life, and yet you have a whole day to go, and you only have a limited capacity or a limited amount of power. How many of you chronically forget? get to plug your phone in. I'm just curious. Yeah. You know, it's okay. We accept everyone here at City First Church. <laughs> All of us from time to time forget that. And you wake up and you're horrified. You're like going, I have so much to do today and I have so little power, right? But can I tell you, even on a macro scale in life, sometimes we encounter things and we think to ourselves, there's so many challenges right now in my life, and yet I have so little strength. 
I have so little power. Today, I want to talk about supernatural power. No matter what age or stage of life you're in, maybe your first time, you know, might be joining us for the first time at God Behind Bars or watching us on TV or online or right here in this auditorium. Today, I want to tell you, you need more power. I need more power. So we're going to talk about this. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians. It says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, 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 all right, but rather it is living by by God's power. This is life goal right here. A life goal of not just talking about God, talking about his kingdom, talking about the Bible, but rather instead to actually sense and personally feel what it is like to have God's strength living through you, his spirit living in you. That's what I want to talk about today. And you may be the CEO of a company or the CEO of a minivan, all right? But I'm telling you, you need God's power. I need God's power. We all need God's power. Have you ever met anybody that just seemed to have that extra little bit of strength? They are, you know, in a relationship with God. They made Jesus the leader and the forgiver of their life, and yet they seem to live with a power. They're going through maybe a very hellish situation, but yet it's like there's a resilience, there's a power and a strength there. Kind of reminds me of this old fellow from your past. Remember Stretch? It was funny because I was going like this and I went up to Liz, um, my executive assistant, and I said, here, give, give, uh, give him a hug. And she goes, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to hug Lance. I'm like, this is not Lance Armstrong. This is Stretch Armstrong. I don't even think she realized she said that. <laughs> but anyway, do you remember this as a kid? I remember getting three of my friends and grabbing a limb and trying to stretch with all of our might. And yet, no matter how thin he was stretched, he never broke, right? How many of you know somebody like that? That no matter what they go through, it's not that they're going through fun circumstances or even circumstances they signed up for, but no matter what they go through, there is a supernatural power and strength that no matter how much they're stretched, it's like God is working through them and they don't break. They're stretched, but they are not broken. That is what I want to talk about today. In the short time we have together, I want us to talk about how to have a supernatural power. These people who have that kind of supernatural strength that comes from God, they do not levitate, they do not fly, they do not have like some favoritism coming from God. They are normal people like you and I, but yet they have tapped into a power that comes from God's spirit. And by the time we leave, I want you to know how you can tap into that power. How do we get power from God? Well, first, we need to acknowledge that in yourself, you do not have enough. Now, this is hard for us, some of us to admit because we have pride. We think, okay, I can take care of my circumstances. I know things are kind of crazy right now. I'm up against some mountains. My back is to the wall, but I'll figure it out. You kind of have that like self kind of thing going on where it's like, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. Well, can I tell you a truism? And that is this, that even if you think you have the world by the tail, there will come a circumstance in life where you will realize how deficient you really are and how much you are lacking strength. You have 18% battery life and you have a full day to go. Does that make sense? All of us come up against that. That was for me, that was for Jen, that was for us and our family when Pax was born. One of many times that we realized that we don't have enough, it was during this season that we realized we in ourselves do not have enough strength, power, wisdom, or anything else. In fact, let's just have a moment of therapy if that's okay. Can you turn to the person next to you right now and say, you don't have enough? Don't have <laughs> some of you didn't like that. <laughs> Some of you are like that, but this is really true. I'm not saying you can't have self-confidence. I'm not saying that you can't be bold. That's not what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, there are things in life that are bigger than you and I. And at the end of the day, we need a strength that is beyond our strength, an ability that is beyond our ability, a wisdom that is beyond our wisdom. And if you agree with me, say a big amen. amen. <laughs> right? There are things that we encounter where we realize how small we are and how big those problems are. But this is what it says in 2 Corinthians. My power, God says, works best in weakness. Okay, now listen, this is upside down thinking. This is Jesus thinking, all right? This is like kingdom thinking. 
In fact, what Paul writes here to the church in Corinth is, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses. In in fact, he goes, listen, I've understand, I've tapped into supernatural power by understanding how weak I am, how strong God is. And instead of me fronting everybody and trying to act like I'm all strong, I just basically say, hey, you know what? I'm weak. But if there is anything good in me, Paul would say, it is because of Jesus. It is because the Spirit of God, so that the power of Christ can work through me. In other words, the strongest place you could be is to understand your weakness and God's strength. That's the strongest place in life that you can be, to understand your limitations and God's limitless abilities. For us to be able to understand that it is him working through us. In fact, I would even say this, that the power of God makes me look better than I really am. That was Jen, by the way, amen in that. But it's true, and it's the same with you. It's the same with you. God's power, his strength, makes you look better than you are. It makes you look better than you are. He makes you look better than you are. In fact, I would say this a lot of times we'll be in the mall or, you know, grocery store or whatever. Somebody will come up to us and very kindly say, we don't understand how you and Jen do it. Can I tell you what? I don't understand how we do it. In fact, I know this. I know who I am. I look in the mirror. I know my shortcomings, my limitations. I know what strengths are on loan from God that he's given to me. And at the end of the day, my strengths fall very short compared to the challenges challenges that are around me. It is only through the power of God and the grace of God and the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me that I'm able to do anything. It's the same with you. It's the same with you. If you say, no, no, I don't need God, God will say, okay, go ahead, drive your life. You're the one in the driver's seat. Go ahead and do it. And many times, at least from personal experience and from talking to probably I could say without exaggeration thousands of people in the 25 years plus that I've been in ministry, that when we drive our own life, we usually end up getting in an accident. But when we say we willingly take the passenger seat, Jesus, you're the one in charge, you're in the driver's seat. When that happens, we have an experience with a supernatural God who gives us supernatural power. Now, does that mean that we're like, you know, a superhero? Does that mean that all of a sudden, like, we're, you know, Ant-Man or Wonder Woman or Superman or whatever? No, no, no. Listen, we're still very human. But what we find out is no matter how much we're stretched, we don't break because God is in us. In fact, it says in 1 John chapter 4, for the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. I love this verse because it doesn't just say stronger. It says Far stronger, all right? Everybody say far stronger after me. One, two, three. Far stronger. The spirit inside of you, when you have a relationship with Jesus, the spirit of God inside of you is not a little bit stronger. It is far stronger than anything in this world. But so many times we don't either know this or we forget this. And so what do we do? We live smaller than what God has called us to live. We live weaker than what God called us to live. Instead, we don't understand what's inside of us. God responds to openness and not to hiding. Why do I say that? Because today, it may be even the first time that you publicly said it in your life, but you say, listen, God, before you, I am saying my hands are open. I cannot do this thing called life. I need your help. I need your strength. That there are challenges, there are things that are in front of you in your future or that you are experiencing right now that are eating your lunch. And you're like, God, I need a strength that isn't just me like getting up every day going, I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to say, I'm good enough and I'm good looking. (laughs) And you know what? I got this. But rather, it's more than that, that there is something inside of you that's given you a strength that's more than just your willpower, more than just you talking yourself into your day. I remember on Friday, October 7th, it was the day after Paxton was born. He came about three weeks early. We we didn't have the room ready yet. And so uh, we had been at the hospital for about 24 hours. And I looked at Jen and I go, I just need to go back to the house for a couple of hours, try to get the room ready because we're going to be going home in a day or so. And it's not ready yet. 
And so I went back to the house. I was all by myself. The other older boys were with the grandparents, and I was all alone in the house, and I was in a a lot of confusion. I mean, those of you that have ever received a report um, about your child in any way that would have been negative, um, it, there's a lot of confusion because like they say, a child is like having your heart walk outside of your body, right? And, and I was like, God, I, I don't know what to do here. And I remember going into that room and I remember sitting in the middle of the floor. Here I am, a grown adult with a family, a pastor of a megachurch, sitting on the carpet. And I began to cry and I began to say, God, I don't understand what you're doing. In fact, I'm not even happy about what you're doing right now. In fact, um, God, I already have a lot of pressure and stress and such. And I don't know what I'm doing. And why was my, my, my son born with special needs? And, and, and you know, I had a very um, a, a colorful conversation with God. Can I just say this? I don't think God is afraid of your honesty. He more is concerned about your hiding. Do you hear that? When you hide from him, in fact, that is the auto response of humans. In fact, Adam and Eve did it the minute that sin entered the world, they hid from God as if God was like, I don't know where they're at. <laughs> right? We've been hiding from God ever since. So don't hide from God. Talk to him. Tell him what's going on in your heart. He already knows it anyway. So I sat down in the middle of that room and I began to cry. And I was like, I was, I was, I was sad. I was scared. I was angry. I was, I was all these things. And I felt like God spoke to me. Not in an audible voice would have freaked me out. Okay, not like that. It wasn't like it was like Jeremy. Okay, I've never had that happen. Rather, it was just this impression that was in my heart or in my soul. I felt like God looked at me and said this, Jeremy, because I'm with you, you got this. You have everything you need. You don't realize it right now, but there are challenges ahead of you. But when you encounter those challenges, Jeremy, you have me, which means you have all that you need. Okay, And I remember feeling, literally, and, and this part I could tell you, I felt it. I felt something come in me that there was like a confidence and a strength. I went back to the hospital and I go, Jen, something happened when I was at home. And she goes, it was the weirdest thing. She was in the hospital room. She was having that same crisis conversation with God. And something came into her. Simultaneously, unilaterally, both of us felt the strength of God come into us. And we said, there is a purpose behind this thing. There's a purpose behind this story that we're in. There's a purpose behind the person of Paxton. And little did we know that almost six years later, we'd be standing on a stage on a church that's growing, and now there is this amazing Champions Club. And, by the way, to the Cape Coral crew, Cape Coral, Florida, that we are going to have a Champions Club there by Christmas. So I will tell you, it's amazing to see what God is going to do. 2 Peter, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. You already got it. When you got Jesus, you got everything. You don't need anything else. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, we call that Easter, we celebrate it every year. That same power lives inside of you. We don't understand that. I forget that all too often. That the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, lives in me, this book says. And yet I live as if I'm in chains. I live in chains to fear. I live in chains to my circumstances. And yet God said, no, I released you from all those chains because of what helped, happened at Calvary. The minute that Jesus came out of that grave, guess what? He conquered death hell and the grave, so therefore I can have life. And not have life that is just kind of barely making it, but rather a kind of life that is overcoming, the Bible says, more than a conqueror kind of life. A victorious kind of life. We need to remember that. We have received all this by coming to know him. So we have everything that we need. But so many times we live at a lesser level, we live without power. It's kind of like this illustration here, you know, of this chainsaw. You know, it's like, it's like a lot of times in life we have, we have pretty big um, situations. This could be a problem. This could be a task. This could be a situation going on in your life that's very hurtful. It could be f fear. It could be all kinds of stuff. So what do we try to do? We try to do the job in our own strength, and this is how we do it. It's kind of like, how long is this going to take, right? 
You know why? It's because we haven't tapped in to the power, the fuel that's on the inside, the Holy Spirit that has given us strength. We have not tapped into it. And because we haven't tapped into it, we end up just trying to go through our situations, trying to encounter our challenges without any power. But God wants us to have power. Now, it's a lot easier when God's power is working through you than when you try to encounter life and take on life in your own power. Now, listen, when I say it's easier, I don't mean it's easy. There's a difference. Most of the time, life is not easy. I will tell you, even with raising packs, um, it has not been easy. Um, beyond that, life in general, the problems that we encounter, you and I, all of us together, the situations, the challenges, I'm not saying it's easy. What I'm saying is, is that when God's power is working through you, it's a whole bunch easier than you trying to saw that log by yourself without any power. Does that make sense? And so, how do you get power? Well, number two, you got to also remember that you cannot have, cannot have power without knowing your position. Without knowing your position. You are a child of God. Do you understand that? God has not forgotten you. You are not an oops. There might be um, accidental parents. There are no accidental children. Amen? So, can I tell you... You have a plan and a purpose and a destiny and a calling to fulfill in this one and only life that has been given to you by God. And so God loves you. He cares for you. He has not, like, decided to pay attention to everybody else except you. No matter what you're going through right now, I will tell you, your circumstances are lying to you and saying God has abandoned you. But God has not abandoned you. He wants to give you power to get through whatever it is that you are going through. And so we got to understand our position. Position. I'm a son of God. If you're a woman in here, you are a daughter of God. And so it says in Ephesians 1.13, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation. This is good news today, by the way. Would you agree? This is good news. God loves you. He cares about you. He has not abandoned you, and he wants to give you strength, all right? Good news of your salvation. And as a result, believed in him, were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. In other words, what, what God is saying through his word here is that even though you don't see physically Jesus with you, his spirit is with you, which means that you've been stamped with approval, all right? That you have been called his. He identifies you as his own. And you've been stamped with the promised Holy Spirit, the one promised by Christ. And what you are owned and protected. I am owned and protected by God. I am owned and protected by God. Can you repeat that after me? I am owned and protected by God. Whatever you're going through right now, you are owned and you are protected by God. God. Your identity is given to you by the one who gave you identity in the first place, who created you, that being God himself. And so as I close, here's a thought. If you come to an intersection of two roads and there is a policeman there directing traffic, and that policeman is standing in the middle of the road and is, you know, stopping cars and directing traffic and such. And there is a, a tanker truck, a, a truck with thousands of gallons of flammable, flammable gasoline hauling towards that intersection. And that policeman stands in the middle of the intersection. And as that truck is approaching at 55 miles an hour, he holds up his hand, okay? What does that truck do? begins to pump the brakes and begins to come to a stop. 70,000 pound vehicle comes to a stop because a 180 pound policeman puts up his hand. Now listen to this. What stopped that truck? Was it the weight or the strength of that policeman? No. What stopped that truck 
was the authority that had been given to that policeman to raise his hand and stop traffic. The authority that has been given. Now listen, every one of us, if we are a son or a daughter of God, we are in relationship with Jesus, we've been given authority. The Bible says that we've been given authority. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Who's the he in the world? The enemy. All right? So that means this. Not because of you, not because of my own strength, not because of our abilities, but because of Jesus in us, the Spirit of God in us, we have been given authority over the enemy. Which means this, that we can stand in the crossroads of our life and of our situations, and we could put up a hand and say, not today, devil. <laughs> not today. Yeah. Not to, you, ever, you ever get mad at the devil? I get mad at the devil sometimes. I was ticked at him yesterday. When I saw the stuff going on in Charlottesville, I'm like, devil, you are such a punk. You're such a liar. You are, uh, you, you are spreading evil. I mean, what the enemy would love us to do is be divided and hate each other because of our looks, our skin, or anything else. And yet, Jesus comes and says, no, the world is going to identify you because of your love for one another. So yesterday, I had one of those stop, devil, not today moments. You see, in life, there are moments that you, you got to understand your authority and your position. It isn't you. It's not you. But rather, it is the Jesus in you, the Spirit of God in you, that the same power that conquered the enemy on Calvary is the same power that lives inside of you and me. So don't live small. Look at your situation and say, not today, devil. Now, I'm not saying your problems are all going to disappear, but I tell you what, you're going to receive strength from heaven to go through whatever it is that's challenging to you right now. That you could say, not today. It is time for our church and the church, the capital C church, to quit playing small to understand our position in this world, to be bold and understand that we have the authority to bind the enemy in the name of Jesus and to be able to call down heaven into our situations. And today, on Superhero Sunday, we're reminded that we all are deficient in one way or another. We are all weak. We need a super hero, supernatural kind of strength to be able to say, not today. Not today, devil. Not today. God's got this. God's got this. He has empowered me to be able to take on whatever it is that I am facing right now. And I realize for some of us here, you're like, oh man, this is such an intense message. I'm trying to get it in your soul today, not your head. I don't want it in your head. I want it in your heart. I want you to walk out of here and realize God is on your side because you are on God's side, which means there's a strength that's supernatural that can work through you. And you can say, not today. Not today, devil. Not today. So if you say, I need that strength, you got some challenges. I want to pray for you real quickly before we leave. We're going to do one last thing that's kind of cool, and then we're going to get out of here and we're going to party, okay? And some superheroes, kitties, by the way, are going to be coming from the sky here in a moment. So uh, I want us to just take a moment and pray. If you need supernatural strength right now for whatever you're facing, you're facing a huge challenge, I want you to just real quickly just raise your hand. And I'm going to pray for you. All right, hands up everywhere, right? All right, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would bring supernatural strength and a realization of who we are to every person that raised their hands. I pray that we would understand our position in you, Jesus. That you loved us, you called us, that you chose us first, the Bible says. I pray that we would understand that we are loved that we are cared for even though our circumstances lie to us. I pray that there would be something that stands up inside of us that we would no longer decide to play small, but rather we would understand the big God that is inside of us and that we would say, devil, not today. Lord, I pray that 
the enemy would be bound in the name of Jesus Christ in people's lives, in this church, watching online at God Behind Bars right now. I pray whatever circumstance, situation, hurt, or whatever that they are encountering, I pray that, Lord God, they would see it in a different light, that they would see it through your eyes, and that, God, that they would realize that they are more than a champion, they are victorious, they are not abandoned, that they have supernatural strength. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. So Lord, I pray that we would say, not today, <laughs> not today. We're not gonna give into fear. We're not gonna give into anger. We're not gonna give into anything except understand that we are a son or daughter of the King and you, you got this, God. We love you in Jesus' name, amen.